The ability to feel no pain sounds like some kind of superpower, and in some instances, it could be. Take, for example, the case of Olivia Farnsworth. Olivia is a child from Huddersfield in the UK who's been dubbed the Bionic Girl. She's earned this name because of a condition she has called chromosome 6 deletion. This condition causes her to not feel pain as well as hunger or fatigue. She became international news at the age of 7 when she was hit by a car and dragged for several feet. And then she just got up and walked away as if nothing had happened, totally nonchalant while her family screaming. And upon examination, it turned out that she had no internal injuries whatsoever, just damage to her skin. Doctors theorized that because she never felt pain, she didn't have the instinct to tense up in that situation, and that's ultimately what saved her from having any internal injuries. The drawback is that because she's never experienced pain, she doesn't have the natural aversion to dangerous situations that a lot of people would otherwise have. And now, while Olivia is the only known person who experiences a lack of pain due to chromosome 6 deletion, there are other conditions that can cause it. For example, you have the case of Gabby Gingrass from Big Lake, Minnesota. She suffers from a condition called Hereditary Sensory and Autonomic Neuropathy Type 5, which also causes you to feel no pain. Her story's been covered for over a decade by various news outlets and shows like Montel, Maury, and Oprah, and it provides an insight into the dangers of living without pain. So for today's episode, let's take a closer look. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You ever go to stream a song or a movie and then you're like, hey, this ain't available in my country, but it is available somewhere else. For example, recently I wanted to watch the classic Italian horror movie, Demons. It's not streaming on Netflix in the US, but I can watch it in Romania. So I go on NordVPN, travel to Romania, and boom. Time to watch some zombies get chopped up with katanas on motorcycles with that classic Claudio Simonetti soundtrack. NordVPN has thousands of servers worldwide, and you can do this on all of your devices, up to six at one time. To get started, just go to nordvpn.com slash wang. Right now, NordVPN's got an exclusive New Year's deal. With every purchase of a two-year plan, you get a massive discount as well as four additional months for free. It's the best deal on the internet, and it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Once again, that's nordvpn.com slash wang. Patrick Swayze famously said in the movie Roadhouse, Hang on her. And he was right. It's really just a matter of perception. And you know, the stuff in our brain that tells us that pain hurts. And the problem is, that perception is actually helpful a lot of the time. You know, you got the old hot stove rule. As a kid, you touch a hot stove and you learn not to touch it because it hurts. But what if it didn't? In 2004, Gabby Gingras's parents spoke to Care 11 in Minnesota about their daughter's condition. They would notice her fall down hard, but not really react and just get up and keep going. And she never cried. And note that never crying was also a symptom that Olivia's parents had mentioned. But you know, that sort of thing, maybe you're better off without it. Here's where you're not better off, though. They also noticed that Gabby was scratching at her own face. And when her teeth came in, she began to chew at her own hands. As her mother described it, She is severely gnawing on her hands. And, and when the teeth come through, even just a little bit, Biting, 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 so they look like raw hamburger. Eventually, she would destroy most of her teeth altogether by chewing too hard on toys, as well as her own tongue. She chewed up her own tongue so badly that she had to be brought in for surgery, in which what remained of her teeth were removed. She had also injured her eyes by scratching at them, so they were literally sewn shut to protect them. Unfortunately, though, that was too little too late, and her left eye had to be removed and only limited revision remained in her right eye. Her father would later come up with the idea of equipping her with the goggles she's seen wearing in the Care 11 report. Since she had these procedures, she would also suffer from a broken jaw, as well as second-degree burns from a humidifier. Her parents were at a complete loss for what to do. But they were also determined to do whatever they had to to ensure a happy future for their daughter. They made appearances on Oprah and Montel to bring awareness to their situation and the condition in general. They'd also start a charity called Gift of Pain to raise funds, but also to act as a support group for other families dealing with this condition. By that time, they had found out about just 25 other cases. In 2005, Gabby was one of three girls followed for Melody Gilbert's documentary entitled A Life Without Pain. And in 2011, Care News would connect with the family once again to see how Gabby was doing. By this time, the Gingras family had been in contact with 60 families dealing with the condition, in large part due to media coverage as well as their Facebook page. They noticed one of the comments on the page while Carol Evan was filming. Hun, I have to read you one, says Trish to Steve as she reads a new posting from another mom. I can't believe I'm actually grateful my daughter cannot feel the bite and bruise created when another child bit her arm on the bus. As they told it, the future for Gabby was looking brighter than they ever expected. 
In addition to their newfound support system, there are now surgeries that could possibly improve her vision. She would also be a candidate for dental implants when she turned 16. A follow-up interview with Oprah in 2014 would echo a lot of the same optimistic outlook, highlighting some of the accomplishments she made that her parents worried wouldn't be possible, although it also cataloged new injuries, such as when she broke her back without realizing it, as she also spoke a bit about the difficulties of dealing with other kids at school. Around this time, they also made a new website for their charity and posted this message, making a difference. A gift of pain incorporated has truly made a difference in people's lives. Not long ago, a mother called us out of the blue and told us that either her or her and her child would not be alive today if it was not for this group. That really is all of you. Thinking about it now, I should have shared it with the group, but it was such a personal, tear-filled moment. A few things that we have learned since we began this eventful journey are that there are several reasons why someone may be affected by insensitivity to pain. Additionally, it affects everyone differently. Some people are high functioning, while at the same time other people are physically or cognitively impaired. We don't care. We welcome them all and help everyone that we can. When I say we, I mean the whole foundation. Everyone. We all help each other. We are the only people in the world who can. No one else knows this condition better than any other group of people in the world. Think of what we have accomplished together. No longer is this condition unknown. As a group, we have had a tremendous amount of publicity. People now say they have heard of the condition. Doctors are no longer unbelieving when you explain it to them. Police no longer take our kids away because they get hurt in unusual ways. We have over 80 members. 13 years ago, we were excited to find even one other family that we could share ideas with. We have a special camp that is dedicated to our kids, so they can try to have a normal camp experience. We care about all of you, and we are dedicated to keeping this group a sanctuary for all the families who are affected by insensitivity to pain. And then 2018 comes along. Gabby was finally old enough for the dental surgery she had waited so long for. She'll be able to eat meat, fruit, vegetables, all the stuff that everyone else takes for granted that she had never actually been able to properly experience. Her surgeons had intended to build her a new jaw from pieces of her hip bones, then attach her new teeth to the new jaw. But then, her insurance company, Aetna, would put a stop to that. According to a letter her family received, Aetna wouldn't pay for the procedures because they only pay for, as they put it, procedures that they deem necessary. So basically they're saying, yeah, sure, just eat baby food for the rest of your life. You'll be fine. In an interview with Kara Levin, her parents elaborate that this procedure is the only option for her. Because of the damage that's been done to her mouth, she can't have dentures. And her father questions whether they just don't understand that this isn't her fault. It's not because she didn't brush her teeth that her mouth doesn't work right. It's not because of anything she did, smoke crack or anything like that, to end up with the mouth she has. It's a condition that she has that is unavoidable, and we're asking them to step up and do what they're supposed to do. The station would reach out to Etna and they would respond. They would now say that the family's plan doesn't include dental. Which, if true, makes it strange that they didn't say that in the letter, they said that it wasn't a necessary procedure. It makes it seem as though this is something they only realized after they had already made the decision to not pay for the procedure. So they would have found a way around it regardless. Because, you know, insurance companies only profit if they don't give you what you paid for. And in the interview with Kara Levin, she shares a photo shoot she did wearing a set of false teeth. Two GoFundMes were opened to try to raise the funds for the procedure, but at around $100,000, it was a tall order, and it seemed to be falling short of the goal. And at that point, the insurance company seemed unmoved by the press coverage. However, Gabby would get her teeth. Delta Dental of Minnesota would pledge to donate up to $100,000 to the procedure. When he spoke to Care 11, their CEO Rodney Young said, The reason we did it is because it's the right thing to do. The combined GoFundMes at that point raised about $45,000, and the Minnesota Dental Association pledged $5,000 as well. Ultimately, Aetna would actually come around and pay some of the money. After further review of Ms. Gingrass's unique circumstances and available plan benefits, we have determined that portions of the procedure, such as anesthesia and operating room services, are covered under the member's medical plan. We were happy to share this with the Gingrass family last week. Steve Gingrass said the Aetna payment will cover a few thousand dollars of the total cost of his daughter's three-stage procedure. He remains insistent that complex dental procedures should be covered by medical insurance. Her surgery would be scheduled for that July. So what actually got me started working on this video, I was in bed, like the sickest I had been in years. I had this weird headache where it was just like stabbing in my ears and the top of my head like every 10 seconds. Like no Tylenol, like nothing helped. I literally couldn't record a video because I would like spasm mid-sentence. 
And I thought to myself, man, I wish I just couldn't feel pain. And I started to remember these stories. Now that I've read more about them, no, I don't. Anyway, as of me recording this video, I was unable to verify whether or not the Gift of Pain charity is still active. But I know for sure I'll leave a comment one way or the other. That being said, you should also know that the girl I spoke about at the beginning of the video, Olivia, has worked with a charity called Unique, a group in the UK that provides support to people with rare chromosome disorders. I'll put a link to them in the description. Anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my video about the guy who built a guillotine to cut off his own feet. I'm out.